Well, if it hasn't already been a big week for the Cubs, well, it just got bigger. They pull off a trade with the L.A. Dodgers, and they get one of the Dodgers' top prospects, and they might have answered the question of who's going to help out in those corner infield spots at the major league level. Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. We're going to talk about the trade to get Michael Bush from the Dodgers, what it means to the Cubs, and more. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when something happens, we're going to be here to talk to you about it. Go Cubs! What do you say, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure that you like and follow and subscribe. And I'm on uh, the socials at Broadcaster Mick. All right. Uh, trade today between the Cubs and the Dodgers. And this may be one of those deals that we look back on and go, you know what? This was a pretty good trade for the Cubs and their future. And honestly, I got to tell you, that you guys that, that get in the comments section and give suggestions and talk, I've seen Michael Bush's name mentioned in that comment section over and over and over again. Well, you guys have gotten your wish. Jed Hoyer must have read that, and the Cubs go out and they make a blockbuster trade with prospects. And I say blockbuster, I mean this in the realm of, of minor league prospects and a big league reliever, a guy that's kind of gone back and forth. But let's start with Michael Bush. Uh, Michael Bush, the 44th overall prospect, in the entire, uh, you know, major leagues, minor leagues, and the organizations, and the, one of the Dodgers' top prospects. He's a guy that hits with power. Uh, he's also a guy who can play some different positions. All right, let's talk about what he can do on the diamond. Can play first base, can play second base. He's played the outfield, and he played a lot of third base as well. So he, they call him a utility guy. And I think part of the reason why they've done that is that when you go out and spend a ton of money for Freddie Freeman, well, there's no first base, and you start looking at where the Dodgers are, he just didn't have a position. But he hit so well that they were going to have to find a position for him. Uh, in Oklahoma City last year, that's AAA for the Dodgers, he put up just some amazing numbers. 27 home runs, 90 knocked in. I'll tell you what really stood out to me is his on-base percentage at 431. And you're talking about the, the best pitching outside of the major leagues. He, he walked 65 times and he struck out 88 and 390 uh, at-bats and 469 plate appearances. So he did all of that in 98 games. He has caught a lot of attention, and it's because he's been consistently hitting for power in the minor leagues. In his four seasons, he's hit 79 home runs and he's got – 267 runs batted in and his career on base percentage is 390. You know, he's done that in uh, 357 career minor league games. Now he played baseball at the university of North Carolina. And what's ironic in this trade is that the Cubs sent back another uh, former Tar Heel to get Michael Bush in this trade. So uh, he was excellent in college and then he has continued that up. Now he got to the big leagues last year and in the major leagues for the Dodgers, played a limited amount of action, only 27 games, and he hit just 167. Walked eight times, struck out 27. The learning curve's still there. He had two home runs and seven runs knocked in. Now, let me say this to you guys. I've mentioned it over and over on this channel, and I'm going to mention it again. The biggest jump now in the sports in baseball anyway and in, in professional baseball is from triple a to the major leagues it used to not be that way it used to be in my opinion the biggest jump was going from a ball to double a but we play a lot less games in the minor leagues for these guys they 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 don't spend as much time level to level the i don't want to say that the talent's not the same but the experience isn't the same and so by the time you get to AAA, you try to make that jump to the big leagues. It is an enormous jump. 
And so you're going to see guys struggle a lot more going from AAA to the major leagues, in my opinion. I think that's one of the reasons why the Cubs went out and got Craig Council. He's made a career out of helping guys like Michael Bush make that transition and become excellent big league players, and maybe even stars. Michael Bush has big league star potential, and he really helps the Cubs who didn't feel like they had an option at third base right now, didn't feel like they had a first base option. I'm sure he'll be battling it out for playing time with Matt Mervis, or maybe he's the third baseman. He does a little of the utility stuff around the diamond and then plays some first base. If you sign Cody Bellinger, he's a good fit because like Bellinger, he can do a lot of different things. So um, I'm really excited, honestly, about Michael Bush and uh, the Cubs making this deal. And, and how many times do you go back and you look at guys like like Michael Bush and you say, hey, Cubs went and they got this guy, the Sandberg guy from Philadelphia. It turned out to be a pretty good player. I'm not saying Michael Bush is that, but you see it, though, sometimes where a guy gets a cup of coffee in the big leagues and then they, then they get traded to another team that notices, you know, that, hey, this guy can play. And then all of a sudden they get to the, the, the major leagues, they get it figured out and they become big time stars. This could be I'm telling you, this could be a potential uh, trade that has those kind of ramifications in the future. Now, let's talk about the practicality of the other aspect of this trade. And uh, the Cubs have to have some help. In the bullpen, they, they've lost some guys, Michael Fulmer being one of those pitchers. Now they need some help out there. And here comes Yancey Almonte, right hander, uh, not a flamethrower. You know, throws, uh, and I'll give you his pitch arsenal right now, throws 50% sweepers, right? So it's, it's like that. I love the sweeper. It's kind of that, you know, it just kind of sweeps away from the right handed batters and then sweeps in the lefties. He throws that at about 83 miles an hour, a little bit over that, and that is his main pitch. That is his go-to. So it's, uh, To me, it's like um, it's almost like a hybrid slider curveball. And, and uh, I can remember uh, some guys really being good at this pitch and using it effectively in the major leagues, having success with it, not having to overpower guys. Now, I'm not telling you that, El Monte doesn't throw hard. His sinker, 95.8 miles an hour. His four-seamer, 96. So whether he's up in the zone or whether he's down in the zone, he's consistently around 96 miles an hour. He throws the sinker most of the time, so he's down in the zone at you know about 26% of the time, and then the four-seamer up in the zone about 16% of the time. He also throws a change-up. That's right under 90 miles an hour, does not throw that pitch a whole lot, uh, under 7%, and then once in a blue moon, he'll throw a cutter. And when I say blue moon, I'm talking about less than 1% of the time he throws that pitch. This is a, this is a necessity for the Cubs. They're going to have to go out and find some relievers, and they feel like El Monte is a guy that could help them. Now, El Monte has dealt with elbow fatigue in the past, so that's something that you got to worry about. But when you catch him when he's when he's healthy, he's a, he's a really good option. Last year for the Dodgers, El Monte had a 506 ERA in 49 games. Um, he threw 48 innings, allowed 43 hits, walked 24 batters, and get and had 49 strikeouts. So about a strikeout per inning, which crazy to say, but. You know, this day and age for a reliever, you strike out one an inning and you're, yeah, you're average, you know, which is which is pretty funny to me because that used to be like you were a strikeout machine. But he's got very comparable numbers there. Um, you know, obviously he comes in with some experience, pitched for the Dodgers in 2002, and that was the year where he was really good. And you guys probably remember him in 2002 in 33 games. He was dominant, had a 102 ERA. That's the guy the Cubs are hoping that they get. He only allowed 18 hits and 35 innings, only walked 10, struck out 33. He was a really good option out of the bullpen for the Dodgers that season. Started out his major league career in Colorado, 2018. Uh, you know, 14 games that year, came back the next season and kind of ping pong back and forth between the minors and the major leagues. But uh, 2021 
ended up throwing 48 games in the major leagues for Colorado, had an earn run average of 755. And then uh, when he went to the Dodgers in 2022, that's when he really showed what he's capable of. But in his career, earn run average is 451. He's seven and six, does, uh, has two saves. And, uh, and like I said, you know, the Cubs are going to try to duplicate what he did in 2022. So the Cubs are giving up a couple of very low level, well, not necessarily low level, new drafted prospects, guys that haven't really been around that much yet. One of them is uh, Zaire Hope. He was at the University of North Carolina. So the uh, Dodgers gave up a Tar Heel. They get one back. Uh, the Cubs also give up pitching prospect Jackson Ferris. Uh, Ferris has excellent stuff. He's still got a long way to go before you'll see him making an impact on a major league roster. To make this deal, though, the Cubs were going to have to give up a quality prospect. And Ferris could be one of those players that in the future you look at and you go, man, you know, Hope too. Hope had, you, you talk about a guy that can get on base. Hope's one of those players, but you, 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 they, they just were just drafted, so they haven't really had an impact. We don't know what they're going to do in the uh, the professional game, uh, other than just what we saw last year. So that's what the deal is right now. I think it's an exciting deal for the Cubs. I think this is a good deal for Jed Hoyer. Um, the Dodgers probably needed to get rid of Michael Bush because they didn't have a spot for him, and the Cubs do so. I think the Cubs got better in this trade. You always take risks when you trade really young prospects because you don't have a chance to evaluate how the transition's going from amateur ball to the big leagues. But honestly, as the Cubs put this roster together, you got a really good idea of what Michael Bush brings to the table. And I'm thinking he's the center poise, uh, centerpiece of this deal, and uh, Michael Bush could end up being uh, a mainstay on the Cubs for a long time. We'll find out. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with us on the Cubs baseball channel. Again, uh, always love to talk ball with you here. Don't forget that the channel is brought to you by the Tennessee Smokies and the Smokies team store at SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. Um, they've got all the memorabilia that you want, Cubs gear. They've got uh, autographed baseball cards and items from guys like Pete Crow Armstrong, Owen Casey, and some of the big prospects, jerseys, and all that. Find out for yourself at the Smokies uh, team store. And we will talk.